The only thing more disappointing with more regularity than the retro JRPG indie scene is that of survival horror. I can count on one hand the number of indie JRPGs that are worth the bandwidth to download. I can count on two fingers the number of survival indie horror games that are worth the same. And one of those games has a name, Signalis. Now, if you had told me that an anime-inspired sci-fi horror game made by two Germans over the course of eight years would be good, I would have laughed my balls off so hard I would have needed an Orchid Pixie to correct the issue. But god damn it, I was wrong, and I've never been happier. By the time Signalis' title screen hits and shows Elster in a dilapidated bathroom, mumbling incoherently into a mirror about how they have to find her, I knew I was in for a mind-fucking of a caliber I hadn't experienced since the almighty Silent Hill 2. And you'd imagine that Signalis welcoming such open comparisons to the king of the survival horror genre would be the game writing checks its ass can't cash. But again, just like I was, you'd be wrong. Signalis stands tall against the other all-time classics in the blood-stained halls of survival horror. And make no mistake, Signalis is true survival horror, not a walking sim or shitty stealth game with a monster chasing you. No, Signalis is proper survival horror, and the fact that the game is fan-fucking-tastic just goes to show that Capcom struck timeless gold when Shinji Mikami descended from the mount with the Ten Commandments of the genre in the form of the original Resident Evil. And, just like Resident Evil, Signalis has actual gameplay, in the form of shooting, stealth, puzzles, resource, and inventory management that all blend together to punctuate an atmosphere of fear and death, where the difference between progressing one step closer to the truth that lies at the center of the mawing abyss of hell and getting your carotid artery ripped open and booted back to the main menu is just how well you can navigate the game's environments. It's amazing. Gameplay is all well and good, it's what makes a video game a video game after all. But what makes something horror is debatably atmosphere, and Signalis has it in spades, a dark, isolating, claustrophobic spiral into the heart of insanity. The weeby anime bullshit aside, the game actually takes heavy visual inspiration from the likes of Alien, Killzone 2, and John Carpenter's The Thing, while trying its best to look like a Sega Saturn game, and absolutely nailing it. To some, the blocky graphics are a turn-off. To men of culture, such as myself, they are a turn-on. If I had it my way, video game graphics would not have progressed much farther than the PS2. But what about the final piece of the horror game trifecta? Sound. The sound in Signalis is eargasmic. The music is supplied by the superb Cicada Sirens and 10,000 Eyes, and while the OST is amazing, what really solidifies the game's sonic identity is the masterful audio design and sound effects, with my personal favorite being the startup sound that plays when Elster is rebooting. It's very alien. Hell, it's more alien than most of the actual sound effects in officially licensed alien video games. <laughs> Signalis is the only game next to the original Silent Hills to keep me awake at night, staring at my ceiling fan as I contemplate my life choices while I slowly sink deeper into an existential crisis. Some people say Omori disturbs them. If that's true, then Signalis would make those people put a gun in their mouth. I'm just left with one question. Kodami! Are you trying to tell me that two Germans in war-torn Germanistan managed to make one of the few games to ever approach the grotesque perfection of the original four Silent Hills, and you choose to let the gagglefuck of Poles at Bloober Team handle the Silent Hill 2 remake? Did you even play the medium Konami? I sure as shit did, and I wish I could refund the game and get back a handful of the hours I spent playing that subpar piece of shit. You already tried letting second-rate developers and Europeans make Silent Hill games, and that went over so well it killed the franchise for a decade. Either bring the development of Silent Hill games back home to Japan, 
or make sure whatever group of filthy round eyes you hand the franchise off to has at least some small shred of talent to back it up. Because despite being Japanese, the thing that sets the original four Silent Hill games apart and above all other survival horror games, besides its unparalleled atmosphere, is the subtlety of its narrative and the ambiguity that brings. And after playing the best Polish game devs have to offer, I am convinced they are too close to Asia to understand what either of those two words mean. But the Germans sure do, with Signalis admittedly taking subtlety and ambiguity to a detrimental degree. But as long as you aren't one of those drooling morons that needs an ending explained video for every piece of media you consume, you'll be fine. Horror is the push and pull of opposites, beauty and disgust, calmness and terror, sorrow and joy, and all of those emotions and more can be found in Signalis. You can play it on PlayStation, you can play it on Xbox, you can even play it on a goddamn Nintendo Switch. I don't care how, I don't care where, just fucking play it. <laughs>